we start our hike to the Swanview Railway Tunnel from the Morrison Road at Car Park. It is a 750 metre walk from the car park to the tunnel along the bed of the old Kalgoorlie narrow gauge railway track. The Swanview Tunnel lies about 35 kilometres east of Perth City in Western Australia in the Darling Ranges. It is one of the features of the old Perth to Kalgoorlie railway line and at the time of building was the only tunnel in Western Australia. The first flower to greet us is a beautiful magenta purple blossom called Patterson's Curse. When I first walked this trail 30 years ago, it was still rough ballast. Now it's excellent even for bicycles. The railway heritage is to be found everywhere. Several side tracks branch off from the main track bed, presumably for maintenance vehicles. A bypass line was built around the north side of the tunnel. It's my intention to walk up through the tunnel and then return via the bypass. Here we find the first major cutting before we get to the tunnel. We have now arrived at the Western Portal.
refuges have been carved into the tunnel walls for track workers to get to safety on the approach of a train. This tunnel is part of the project to replace the original Eastern Railway Line. It was managed by Engineer-in-Chief C.Y. O'Connor. Originally it was said to be 261.5 metres long, but more modern authorities give the length at 340 metres, or 1,120 feet. The tunnel was opened on the 22nd of February 1896. The joint at granite, along with clay seams, caused difficulties during construction of the tunnel. A masonry lined face prevented rockfalls but reduced the inner diameter. This smaller diameter, combined with a steep gradient of 1 in 49, caused smoke accumulation. Incidents involving near asphyxiation of train crews started in 1896 and continued throughout the tunnel's operating life. In the 1940s, the problem became very apparent. In the case of the ASG Garrett locomotives, the distance between the sides and the top of the locomotives and the structure of the tunnel is only a matter of inches. The worst accident of the tunnel was on the 5th of November 1942 when both drivers and firemen were asphyxiated by carbon dioxide, with one member of the crew dying when the fully laden double-header train passed through the tunnel at a walking pace. Further cases occurred in 1943 and 1944 on up trains. Plans were then drawn up so that eastbound trains would no longer have to use the tunnel. This deviation was completed on the 25th of November 1945. I am thankful to Wikipedia for providing us with this information. It's quite amazing because I remember back in 1965 going through this tunnel in an eastbound train. This may explain why a steam locomotive was double-headed with a diesel. I suspect there may have been track work happening on the deviation at that time. According to the construction date, it is now 125 years old. A grand old lady. Many years ago, back in 1965, I actually rode a train when I first joined the Air Force, rode the same train from here, up through to Kalgoorlie, he went through the tunnel. At the time, I didn't know how unusual it was to travel eastbound through the tunnel. Our western train was double-headed, a steamer leading an X-Class diesel. I was 17 at the time and didn't have a camera. Many years ago, we have double-headed steamers dragging their passenger carriages, charging valiantly towards the tunnel.
The noise the train made is nothing. The peace of the tunnel is about to be totally shattered by a school gang who have walked up through the eastbound cutting before descending through the tunnel. Peace and tranquility have been restored and it's safe now to resume hiking. Our sky puts on a magnificent show for us at the eastern end of the tunnel. Those hardy pioneers who built this line and its tunnel have been honoured by four large plaques erected to commemorate their struggles and the hard work they did to complete this major project. For some time now, I've been hearing a tinkling brook down the slope somewhere. I haven't been able to see it, but finally I've got a chance to have a look at it. Ah, all the comforts of home. It's time for a last look up the old track bed leading up to the John Forest National Park before hiking back along the bypass track bed back to the car park. The bypass doesn't have its own tunnel but it does have several deep cuttings.
The bypass track bed is coming to an end and we are rejoining the main line. I've just spotted another creek which I didn't see as I walked up. I've come to the end of my hike, about 3 kilometres total, of the Old Swan View railway line and its tunnel.